The Stats FCS Game of the Week preview features the Big Sky Conference this week as the UC Davis Aggies battle the Eastern Washington Eagles. But that's not the only big game in the conference this week. Let's take a look at the rest of the schedule and to see who's in must-win mode this week in the Big Sky. Montana State welcomes in Northern Colorado. Portland State heads out to North Dakota. The Lumberjacks head to California as they take on Sacramento State. The Grizz take on New Big Sky foe Idaho. Cal Poly welcomes in number 24 Idaho State. The Beehive Bowl will take place this weekend in Cedar City as number three Weber State takes on Southern Utah. And the Stats FCS Game of the Week pits number four UC Davis coming to the Inferno to take on number five Eastern Washington. As we look at the standings, the conference is not locked up yet, with number four UC Davis sitting at a perfect 6-0, and followed up by Eastern Washington, Weber State, and Idaho State, all at 5-1. and The Bobcats, the Vikings, and the Grizz all sitting at 3-3. Three and three. Cal Poly, Idaho, and Northern Arizona all at 2-4. and four. Northern Colorado, Southern Utah, and Sacramento State round out the conference. In Week 9, Monmouth, Garner-Webb, and Kennesaw State all picked up wins on the road. The only difference in Week 10 was that the trio all won in front of their home fans. Before we get into Week 11's action, let's take a look back at the weekend that was. First, the Monmouth Hawks won their fifth straight thanks to a 37-3 win over Charleston Southern. Quarterback Kenji Bahar finished 15 of 25 for 155 yards and three touchdown passes to three different receivers. Terrence Green Jr. reeled in six passes for 63 yards and a touchdown. The Hawks ran for 295 yards as a team, with two of their backs eclipsing the century mark. Pete Guerrero ran for 117 yards on 22 carries in a score, while Juwan Fari had 100 yards on 21 carries. For the Buccaneers, dual threat quarterback London Johnson had 117 yards on eight completions through the air and added 96 yards on 19 carries on the ground in the loss. The running Bulldogs picked up their second straight win by defeating Presbyterian 38-20. Garner-Webb led 38-7 into the fourth before a pair of Jordan Morgan touchdown passes rounded out the scoring. It was a balanced effort for the running Bulldogs in the win as they had 228 yards on the ground and 251 yards through the air. Jordan Smith completed 14 of his 26 passes with three of those going for scores. Kyle Horton caught two of the touchdown passes, with both coming in the first quarter. The first touchdown catch was a 74-yarder to set the tone for the afternoon. Horton finished with six catches for 159 yards, and on the ground, Jalen Cagle ran the ball 14 times for 105 yards and a score in the win. For the Blue Hose, Morgan was 8 of 16 for 123 yards and two scores through the air. And on the ground, he rushed 11 times for 99 yards and a score in the loss. Number two, Kennesaw State won their ninth straight conference game and eighth straight overall after a 49-0 throttling of Campbell. After a scoreless opening quarter, reigning Big South Player of the Year, Chandler Burks found the end zone three times on the ground to give the Owls a 21-zip lead going into the break. Burks' second score was a 50-yard run. Darnell Holland set the tone in the second half by returning the opening kickoff 84 yards to the house. The Owls ran for 395 yards on 58 carries as a team, rushing for 6.8 yards per touch. Burks finished with 97 yards and four scores on 12 carries, and through the air he completed three of his four passes for 49 yards and a TD. Shaquille Terry had 112 yards on eight carries, and Kyle Glover had 70 yards on 10 carries. Backup quarterback Daniel David even got in on the scoring. His only pass of the day was to T.J. Reed for a 23-yard score in the fourth. The Owls held the Fighting Camels to just five first downs and 138 total yards. Before we get into Week 11, let's take a look at the updated Big South standings. Number two, Kennesaw State sits alone at the top at 4-0, with Monmouth right behind them at 3-0 in conference play. Those two will meet in Long Branch this weekend. Garner-Webb is in third at 2-1, with Charleston Southern in fourth at 1-2. Campbell and Presbyterian are sitting at the bottom, both winless. One of those two teams will get their first conference win this weekend, as the Blue Hose host the Fighting Camels on Saturday. Campbell started the season 5-1, but has lost three straight since conference play began. Presbyterian has lost five straight, and they still haven't defeated a Division I school this season. 
Both teams bring in top 50 defenses and both are holding opponents under 28 points per game. The edge offensively goes to Campbell. The Fighting Camels are led by dual threat quarterback Daniel Smith, who leads the team in both passing and rushing yards. The first team to 20 likely wins this one. The Garner Webb running Bulldogs look for their third straight win as they travel to Charleston Southern this weekend to take on the Buccaneers. The Garner Webb offense has taken off after their bye week as they've eclipsed the 35 point mark in back to back games for the first time this season. On the other side, Charleston Southern has scored just 13 points combined over their two game losing streak. The key matchup in this one is between Charleston Southern's pass defense, the best in the nation, and Garner Webb's quarterback, Jordan Smith. The Buccaneers are giving up just 134 yards through the air per game, and Smith has eclipsed that number in seven of his nine games. He's coming off a 251-yard effort against Presbyterian, and he's thrown seven touchdown passes over the last two weeks. If Charleston Southern can contain Smith, they could be looking at a win. In what will likely be the game of the year in the Big South, number two Kennesaw State takes their nine-game conference winning streak on the road to Monmouth, who's 3-0 in conference play and winners of five straight. This will be Kennesaw's final conference game of the season. Last year, they defeated Monmouth 52-21, so if they can do that again, they'll win the Big South for the second straight year. Kennesaw State scores over 47 points per game, the best mark in the FCS, and in their previous four conference games, they're averaging just under 50 points per game. Their offense is led by dual-threat quarterback Chandler Burks, who's accounted for at least three touchdowns in every game during their eight-game winning streak. Oh, and their games haven't been shootouts. Their defense is the third best in the country, and they're allowing just 10.8 points per game. The only team to score 20-plus against Kennesaw was FBS Georgia State, and the only one FCS school has scored over 13 points against the Owls' defense. Monmouth's offense will likely be their toughest test to date. It ranks 20th overall, and the Hawks are scoring 32.8 points per contest. The Hawks are led by their three-headed monster on offense, Kenji Bahar, Juwan Ferrari, and Reggie White Jr., the conference's leaders in passing yards, rushing yards, and receiving yards, respectively. If Monmouth wants to derail the Owls' streak and run the table the rest of the way in the Big South, those three, along with Pete Guerrero, need to be on point. Otherwise, it's another title for the Owls. That's all for this week in the Big South. Come back next week to see who won that exciting Monmouth-Kennesaw matchup, as well as the other results and more. For the FCS Conference Whip Around, I'm Frank LaSalle. It was an explosive week in the CAA, highlighted by a couple of huge upsets. Number three, JMU was shut down by UNH 35-24. The main black players helped their playoff hopes with a 35-28 win over Towson, while Elon just squeaked by Rhode Island 24-21. In other action, number 13, Delaware defeated Albany 21-16, and Villanova defeated Richmond on the road by a score of 45-21. Taking a look at the CAA standings, Delaware and Maine are sitting on the top spot, both at 5-1, while Elon sits just behind in third. Towson, JMU, and Stony Brook still look in good shape for an FCS playoff berth, all with records of 4-2 in conference play. There are several critical games this week in the CAA, with several teams fighting for playoff consideration. This week, Albany travels to UNH, Villanova will host the Tribe of William & Mary, while Maine heads south to take on Richmond. Also, JMU will host Rhode Island, who will look to play spoiler, while Stony Brook squares off with Delaware. But the marquee game this week will feature the Phoenix of Elon as they host a Towson squad looking to return to their winning ways. For the FCS Conference Whip Around, I'm David Hassig. Last week's game of the year between Princeton and Dartmouth didn't disappoint at all, and the game this week between Harvard and Penn shouldn't either. Let's take a look at the standings to see why this will be a monumental game for both squads. Columbia heads to Rhode Island to take on Brown. Harvard and Penn clash in Philadelphia. Number 25, Dartmouth, heads to upstate New York to take on Cornell. And number 13, Princeton, takes their high-powered offense and defense into the Yale Bowl to take on the Bulldogs. The updated standings of the Ivy League have Princeton sitting at 5-0 in the first place spot, followed up by Dartmouth at 4-1. Yale and Penn follow them up at 3-2. Cornell and Harvard both at 2-3. Columbia at 1-5. And, and Brown still waiting on their first conference win. It was another entertaining week in the MEAC in Week 10, featuring an upset of a title contender. 
The Howard Bison edged out Florida A&M 31-23 in a huge win. Number 17 A&T defeated Norfolk State 37-20, while North Carolina Central defeated Edward Waters College 52-12. In other action around the league, Delaware State shut down Savannah State 25-6, and Bethune-Cookland barely got past Morgan State 30-28. Florida A&M still controls their own destiny to go to the Celebration Bowl despite last week's loss, but are teetering on the edge if they lose another game. A&T Aggies and Howard Bison sit just behind the Rattlers in the standings, while Bethune-Cookman and South Carolina State sit at 3-2. Coming up in Week 11 in the MEAC, NC Central and Bethune-Cookman will get some national exposure as they square off on Thursday on ESPNU. On Saturday, Morgan State will host Delaware State. A&T will travel to Georgia to face Savannah State, while Florida A&M will face a must-win bounce-back game against South Carolina State. But this week's feature game will be between Norfolk State and Howard, as the Bison look to keep their slim hopes of the Celebration Bowl bid alive. For the SDS Conference Whip Around, I'm David Hassagan. Welcome to Week 11, and congratulations to the North Dakota State Bison for clinching at least a share of the Missouri Valley Football Conference title for the eighth year in a row. With only two weeks left in the season, here are the conference standings. The Bison are 6-0, the Jacks, Panthers, and Leathernecks are all 4-2, the Sycamores are 3-3, three three, the Redbirds, Bears, Yotes, and Penguin Nation are all 2-4, and, and the Salukis are 1-5. Let's take a look at week 11 as the number one Bison travel to Missouri State, number six South Dakota State travels to Southern Illinois, number 22 Northern Iowa looks to wrap off a playoff spot as they head to Youngstown State, Western Illinois looks to keep their slim playoff chances alive as they head to South Dakota, and finally, in the game of the week, number 23 Illinois State takes on Indiana State with the loser being eliminated for playoff contention. Indiana State quarterback and stats, FCS National Offensive Player of the Week, Ryan Boyle, has been nothing short of magical after the devastating loss of their phenom running back, Jaquan Keyes, as he has had eight passing and two rushing TDs in the last two weeks as the Sycamores have won three in a row and are serious playoff contenders. The Redbirds, on the other hand, are trying to break a three-game losing streak and hold on to the final playoff spot. This should be a typical, hard-fought Missouri Valley football game with the winner in the driver's seat for the playoffs. Now to this week's Conference Players of the Week. Offensive honors goes to Indiana State quarterback Ryan Boyle for his new program record 7th touchdown and 380 total offensive yard performance. Defensive honors goes to Indiana State linebacker Cottrell Moss, who had 18 tackles, including 10 solo stops. And special teams goes to Northern Iowa kicker Austin Ertham, who was 4 for 4 in field goals, 2 for 2 in extra points, and averaged a whopping 65 yards per kickoff. For the Missouri Valley Football Conference on Football Game Plans FCS Whip Around, I'm Brian Sullivan. The weather's been getting colder, but the NEC action's been heating up. Turnovers were the story in the showdown between Bryant and St. Francis. The Bulldogs turned the ball over four times in their 27-14 loss. The Dukes' D came up big, holding Ryan Fulce to 54 rushing yards as they beat the Seahawks 47-30. The explosive running back tandem of Meacham and Chestnut took over in the game, combining for almost 300 yards on the ground and three TDs as Sacred Heart beat Robert Morris 38-7. Let's see how last week has affected the standings. Sacred Heart remains the only unbeaten team in the Northeast. They are a game up on Central Connecticut State and Duquesne, who are both 3-1. St. Francis is 2-2 two two after two straight conference wins. Bryant is 2-3. Wagner is 1-3 with Robert Morris 0-5 in the conference. And we're getting close to the end, guys. The games seem to be getting more exciting every week, and this week is no exception. We have a matchup this week between Sacred Heart and Duquesne. Sacred Heart is undefeated in the conference, while Duquesne is coming off three straight impressive conference wins. The Dukes were able to control Fulce on the ground last week, but this week won't be any easier as they face Meacham and Chestnut. But don't sleep on Hines, he's coming off three stellar games as well. He rushed for 238 yards last week. This should prove to be a great matchup. Arrested Blue Devil team travels to St. Francis to take on the Red Flash. St. Francis is coming off two straight conference wins, and Fenimore has thrown at least two touchdown passes in eight straight games. The Blue Devils can't look past this game to the following week's matchup with Duquesne. 
Can Dawson continue some of last week's magic when he exploded for 361 yards on the ground and five TDs? Or will the Red Flats defense have a strong second straight showing? It's a little alliteration for all you English majors out there. Don't say we don't teach you anything. The Bulldogs take on Wagner with this week. Both teams are coming off tough losses. Bryant started the season strong, but lost their last three conference games. After being held to only 54 yards last week, Foss has dropped out of the top spot for rushing yards. I can't imagine that he'll be contained for a second week. While the Bulldogs controlled the Red Flash rushing attack last week, teams have been able to run on them. Also, they can't turn the ball over like they did last week if they want to have a chance to win. Robert Morris is on the road to take on Eastern Kentucky. The Colonials have to start strong in this one. In their last two losses, they didn't even score until the second half. It's also important to get Jackson and Stevens going early and often. The duo has combined for just under 1,200 yards this season. Well, that's all for me. See you next week. I'm Scott Glennon with your FCS Whip Around. Enjoy the games. The two weeks ahead will decide who is celebrating championships and who goes home disappointed. But week 10 in the Ohio Valley Conference proved that you cannot look ahead of or to any opponent. So let's take a look at what happened before we get to what will happen. What did happen was Murray State, who had a shot at a conference championship on the line in their game against Southeast Missouri next week, lost to Tennessee Tech 27-24. It was win number one on the year for the Golden Eagles and Coach Dwayne Alexander's first win as their head coach. And Jacksonville State, who visits Tennessee Tech next week, before ending the regular season with number two Kenesaw State at SunTrust Park in two weeks, needed a touchdown, their only offensive end zone visit of the game, with 29 seconds left to beat one win UT Martin at home on Saturday. UT Martin gave the Gamecocks all they could handle and pulled ahead with a minute and seven seconds to play, but JSU kept their conference title hopes alive with a quick score and finished the job on defense. Eastern Kentucky continued its fine run in the OVC this year with a comeback victory at Austin P. Trailing 13-3 at half, Leotis Trey Moore intercepted a Jeremiah Oatesville pass and took it to the house to cut the Colonel's lead, I'm sorry, to cut the Colonel's deficit to three. Then, in the fourth quarter, Trey stepped up again with another interception. This one setting up the game-winning drive, led by freshman Parker McKinney, who had replaced injured starter Alfonso Howard. Moore's heroics earned him my OVC Defensive Player of the Week award. And also in this game, Logan Birchfield became the first governor in 10 years to make two field goals from more than 40 yards, as he nailed 45 and 43 yarders earning himself my OVC Special Teams Player of the Week award. And Daniel Santa Catarina went 22 of 36 for 306 yards and four touchdowns to lead Southeast Missouri to yet another OVC win and earn himself my OVC Offensive Player of the Week award as the Red Hawks down Tennessee State 38 to 21. SEMO remain right up there with Jacksonville State atop the Ohio Valley Conference standings as they will travel to Murray this Saturday to take on the Racers. While as we previously said, JSU go to Cookville to take on Tennessee Tech. Eastern Kentucky goes out of conference next week to host Robert Morris in a matchup of Colonels versus Colonials. Tennessee State travels to Martin in a Sergeant York Trophy Eliminator match, and both two and four teams will match up as Eastern Illinois comes off its bye week to host Austin P. For Football Game Plan's FCS Conference Whip Around, I'm Luke Jackson. This past Saturday brought us three games out of the Patriot League, with none of them being close contests. Holy Cross traveled to Lafayette, and it was Lafayette that held the lead at the end of the first quarter, 14-0. Surprisingly, though, that was all they could muster, as Holy Cross would outscore them 40-0 for the remainder of the game. Dominique Crozier had three short rushing touchdowns, and quarterback Jeff Wade threw for two touchdowns, one being a 50-yard strike to receiver Richie DiDicola. 
This win gave Holy Cross its second victory in conference. Lehigh took care of business Saturday, downing Bucknell by a comfortable margin. Although the score was close at halftime, it took two big strikes from quarterback Brad Mays of Lehigh to seal the victory. Late in the second quarter, Mays hit receiver Jorge Portorial for a 56-yard strike for the third touchdown of the game. Then late in the third quarter, again Mays connecting with Portorial, this time for a 72-yard touchdown. Tacking on two more touchdowns in the fourth quarter, Lehigh would win 45-17, giving them their first victory in conference. The team, though, that we continue to watch is Colgate. Following their 38-0 thrashing of Georgetown a week ago, they didn't miss a beat this past Saturday as they cruised the victory over Fordham 41-0. Although quarterback Grant Brenneman nearly threw for 200 yards, the heavy lifting came from the rushing attack as Colgate racked up 364 yards on the ground. Leading away was James Holland with 165 yards and two touchdowns. The defense of Colgate continued to prove why they are one of the best in the nation as he sacked Fordham freshman quarterback Tim Demorat six times for a negative of 50 yards. Ultimately, the Colgate defense only gave up 28 yards in total, securing their fifth shutout of the season. This ties them with South Carolina State back in 1978, who also had five shutouts. Colgate will look to break this record next week as they travel to Lehigh. Sitting now at number 10 nationally, Colgate has clinched the automatic FCS playoff bid and has clinched at least a share of the Patriot League title. All seven teams are in action this coming Saturday with two games set for a noon kickoff and two others set for a 12.30 kickoff. This has been the FCS Whip Around with Joel Smoss. It was another interesting week in the Pioneer League. We saw Jacksonville upset Butler for their first conference win in a game where they stayed away from passing by only throwing two times and running for 448 yards. Their rushing attack was led by quarterback Calvin Turner Jr., who rushed for 194 yards and two touchdowns. Marist handled Valparaiso this week. Stetson beat Moorhead State with quarterback Colin McGovern passing for 390 yards along with four touchdowns. Finally, San Diego beat Drake to extend their conference winning streak to 27 games, which is the active high in the FCS. A quick check of the stand-in. San Diego is still undefeated and in first. Stetson and Marist are both right behind them with a 5-1 conference record. Then Drake at 4-2, Dayton at 3-3, three three, Moorhead State and Davidson are both 2-4, Jacksonville jumped up two spots due to tiebreakers but are 1-5 along with Valparaiso and Butler. Now a look into next week's game, Stetton goes on the road to take on Butler. Dayton hosts Moorhead State. Jacksonville and Valparaiso fight for the push up the standings. Marist and Drake face off. And in the Pioneer League game of the week, San Diego looks to stay undefeated against Davidson. For the FCS Whip Around, I'm Dylan Cieslick. With Wofford's loss last week against Sanford, it gave East Tennessee State a share of the SoCon title. Credit hit coach Randy Sanders for having these guys play great football this year. You can also give some kudos to second year head coach Tom Arth at Chattanooga as his mocks still have an outside chance at an at-large bid. Let's see what the Week 11 schedule in the SoCon has in store. Four games this weekend in the Southern as Mercer heads to Chattanooga. The key debts welcome in Furman. Sanford takes on the Citadel and number 15 Wofford heads to Western Carolina. Still a tight race in the SoCon as East Tennessee sits atop the conference at 6-1, followed up by Wofford at 5-2. Sanford and Furman both at 4-2. Chattanooga coming in at 4-3. Mercer, Citadel, Western Carolina, and Virginia Military all round out the conference. The balance in the SWAC to me has been the story so far in 2018 within the conference. Right now, Alcorn State looks to be the class of the SWAC, but Jackson State, Alabama A&M, Alabama State, and Grambling, and also Southern still have a lot to say and play for. Let's see what's on tap this weekend in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Alabama A&M welcomes in the Tigers of Grambling. Jackson State will take on Alabama State. Southern welcomes in Arkansas Pine Bluff. And Mississippi Valley State will play an out-of-conference game against Hampton. Taking a look at the standings, Alcorn State still sits atop the East at a 5-1 in-conference record, followed up by Alabama A&M, Jackson State, Alabama State, and Mississippi Valley State. 
over to the west. Southern and Grambling still fighting it out, separated by one game, followed up by Prairie View A&M, Texas Southern, and Arkansas Pine Bluff. Despite their weird 2018 scheduling, the Hampton Pirates and head coach Robert Pronte have put together a solid season. Can they get to six wins on the year this week? Well, let's see who the Pirates will play and where they will dock their ship this upcoming weekend to find out. Hampton heads to Mississippi to take on the Delta Devils. North Alabama will take on North Greenville, and North Dakota takes on a familiar foe in Portland State.